That's a legitimate goal for us. Russia has spent more than a billion dollars to protect the Crimean bridge. Echelon surveillance. Anti-sabotage units on duty 24-7. Helicopters, ships, and an electronic detection station. It's the most heavily guarded military facility in the world. Russian propaganda is based on symbols. The Crimean Bridge is a symbol of power, authority, and strength of Putin's state. This is a real slap in the face to Putler and Russia. This operation changed the world's concept of naval operations. This is a new paragraph and a new stage in the history of naval battle. We actually turn the philosophy and the approach. How and with what did the AFU manage to hit the Kerch Bridge, or as it's also called the Crimean Bridge? Ukrainian special forces have reveled some details of this extraordinary special operation, which we will find out in this episode. The start of the construction of the Crimean overpass marked the realization that Russia was preparing for a major war. As soon as they started building it, we realized that, in the event of a full-scale war, it would be the main logistics artery for the enemy. That is exactly what happened, and the enemy troops in the south of Ukraine are being fed by the Kerch Bridge. They receive weapons and munitions through this logistics route. The Crimean Bridge itself was a guarantee for Russia, so that they could do this at any time and very quickly. This logistics change was very important for the enemy. By destroying this bridge, this overpass, we would deprive Russia of the freedom to move heavy weapons, heavy equipment, tanks to Crimea, as well as to provide fuel and ammunition to the Russian Black Sea Fleet, which is stationed in our Sevastopol. That's a legitimate goal for us, in accordance with the Geneva Convention and other international law, the current legislation of Ukraine, and the customs of war. This is a completely legitimate goal. It is, in fact, an illegal construction on the territory of Ukraine. President Zelensky personally ordered the destruction of this overpass. We first hit it on October 8th. It happened the day after the seventh anniversary of the bunker grandfather. I think he had a very bad headache that morning, and we gave him the right gift. We used improvised explosive devices, which is a hexagon mixture, and the amount was almost 15 tons. In TNT equivalent, this is almost 21 tons. You saw all the consequences of that explosion. They tried to restore it for more than eight months, but they still did not fully restore it. And for the second time, we hit the bridge on July 17 this year, this time with the help of Sea Baby drones. And this time, we did not enter from land, but of course from the sea. We had to collect all the intelligence data, all the information about what this bridge is made of and what its structural elements are, in order to understand what kind of weapon we can use to destroy it. The head of security service gave me this beautiful book. I can only guess where he got it. It is working documentation for the construction of a transport crossing through the Kerch Strait. The design documentation for a tank, a missile, an airplane, it is secret in itself. Not to mention such a strategic object as the Crimean Bridge. Here we found everything we needed. We need to understand how we could destroy this Kerch Bridge. From the documents we read, we understood the general information about the bridge. But it's one thing to see it on drawings, and another thing to see it in reality. In preparation for the operation, most of the information used for reconnaissance was obtained from open sources. One of the sources of this information was a video recording of a Russian woman who was vacationing near the Crimean Bridge on a yacht and filmed the internal structures of the bridge's arch.
This information gave us an idea of where to attack the bridge in order to cause maximum damage. Every Russian with a smartphone is our best friend, comrade and client. We can observe many objects inside Russia, in the occupied territories and so on. Let them film, record, photograph and post more. The Korean bridge was built in a strait with a very large layer of silt. In order to gain a foothold in this silt, the Russians used 15 to 30 different piles under each pillar, which are stuck in the mud like a broom. And on top of this broom is a concrete bull, and above it is a pillar on which the overpass is actually located. It would probably be very difficult to destroy this pillar, because it is very thick. But my engineers had a brilliant idea that we should try to break these piles that are under the lower gantry at the water level so that they would break. And then this support, in principle, will pull the bridge down even more. From a technical point of view, it was a very difficult task, but one that we had to accomplish. We don't have such long-range missiles. We don't have such huge torpedoes. We have bombs, but the enemy would not let us fly our planes there. After consulting with the head of the security service and the Navy commander, we came to the conclusion that we need to build a new marine drone that will be able to deliver 800 kilograms of TNT to the pylons on the Crimean bridge to travel at least 800 kilometers by sea with an excitement of up to four points. The speed of such a drone should be that at the final stage it could break away from the pursuing ships, if any, or maneuver when we were attacked by helicopters. This drone had to have continuous guaranteed communication with the operator. So we had to find such very complex engineering solutions as soon as possible. The security service of Ukraine has united the best specialists from many fields, including engineers, programmers and sailors, who are still working on the production and further successful use of new naval drones. The prototype for the Sea Baby military maritime surface drone was the Cossack boat Chaka. It was quite small in size compared to enemy ships, and due to this, it successfully maneuvered between them and was used back in those days to successfully perform naval combat missions. By the way, if you look at the marine surface drone when it goes gliding, that is, it moves quickly on the surface of the water mirror. It looks very similar to the Cossack boat, Chaika, and at that very moment. Our glorious ancestors constantly inspire us, and we still feel this genetic connection. We made a prototype and loaded it with one and a half tons of sandbags. Then the main task was to understand whether this prototype works and how it works. We hit the ice with this boat. We cut these pieces of ice at speed. It is absolutely not afraid of any impacts, any cracks. It's easy to repair and transforms to perform any task. The key to implementing this special operation is the communication signal. We were able to involve uh, volunteers in our team to help us set up the best communication in the world for our sea babies. Because we could not rely on Elon Musk products. We're in constant contact with our Western partners. When they looked at the electronic stuffing that makes up our boats, they were simply amazed. They tell us that they're learning from us. And these are our top colleagues from the Western world.
If you look inside the drones, you'll see inscriptions of our military. We will take revenge for every destroyed home, for every killed family, for every unfulfilled dream, for every tear of our parents, our wives, our children, for every dead Ukrainian. An operator flying an aerial drone is different from an operator flying a marine drone. To do this, you need to have certain ability and feel how the elements affect your vehicle. And of course, only those people who have been doing this all their lives can provide this specificity. It took four months to train a surface drone pilot from scratch. It is quite a challenge to learn maritime business without the appropriate professional training. Our guys have been trained to detect, recognize and identify all Russian vessels in the Black Sea. We studied each ship in detail, its armament, design and weaknesses. We had to be able to recognize any type of enemy ship by its silhouettes. Together with the military and sailors, we created the headquarters of this operation. It was a huge number of monitors displaying all the information that was available in the Black Sea at the time. We monitored the weather, waves, currents, the movement of civilian and military ships, Russian aviation and all the factors that could affect our success. Five naval surface drones took part in the operation to destroy the Crimean bridge. They moved in two groups. It is advisable to send two boats forward to conduct reconnaissance. And in case of detection or encounter with someone, they warned the main group to make a maneuver. We were supposed to arrive at the Crimean bridge around 2 a.m. Why? Because the night is very short in July. At 3.30 a.m. Kyiv time, it was already dawn. And our boats could have been detected along the dozens or even hundreds of civilian judges swarming the Kerch Strait. So we had to get there at night. From Kyiv, we controlled these drones that were 700, 900 thousand kilometers away. On a flight tracking tablet that monitors Russian aircraft, we saw a Russian Su-27 fighter jet heading in our direction. It was a tense moment. We realized that they were looking for us. Russian military planes, helicopters, and their ships. They're not sitting idle either, but are constantly monitoring the sea and looking for our surface drones. We decided to change the route dramatically and headed south. It was necessary to make a hook of more than 70 kilometers of additional travel. We could not reach the point by 2 a.m., so we had to increase our cruising speed. Our drones began to cover the remaining distance to the Crimean Bridge in an accelerated mode. Then we receive information that the Russian frigate Admiral Essen was approximately on our route. Is that a Russian ship? Yes, it's their boat, right on the course. This is one of the two ships that can claim to be the flagship of the Black Sea Fleet after the cruiser Moscow. This is one of the ships carrying the caliber missiles that have been striking throughout Ukraine, which has caused many deaths of our civilians. Of course, we want to destroy it. Sinking the frigate? The flagship of the Black Sea Fleet is like sinking Moscow. It's just the second episode. To be honest, this is a very, very high priority target for us. And at some point, the team began to hesitate, like, here it is in the crosshairs. Let's maybe strike at Essen. But I forbade them to do so, because we had a clear task from the Supreme Commander-in-Chief. We had to strike at the Kerch Bridge and cut off the enemy's logistics. And we will definitely return to the Admiral Essen a little later. Left? Yes, go left. We've passed him. It's okay, I'm moving two meters per second. That's it, he passed us. Both Hunter and the Admiral at some point, at some stage, were even upset, and so was I. But then we realized that this was only the right decision after all. 
By the time the first two drones reached Yalta, they were about 70 to 80 kilometers ahead of the other three. Given that the three drones had to move at a higher speed than planned to catch up, they also had higher fuel consumption. Therefore, the lagging drones would most likely not have reached the target. They would have run out of fuel. Each boat carried 900 kilograms of TNT. If you have such a charge and some of the drones run out of fuel, you don't want them to just drown. And there is an Essen nearby. It was decided that the first two boats, which were already close to the Kerch Strait, would go on to the bridge, and the three boats that were behind would search, detect, pursue, and possibly destroy the enemy frigate. The drones were moving at maximum speed, up to 80 kilometers per hour, for about an hour. Luckily for the crew of the Essen, for the temporary happiness of its crew, their ship went to Novorossiysk, so even theoretically our three sea babies could not catch up with it. They were completely out of fuel. We remotely detonated them a short distance from the shore near Yalta, Partinen, and Gursov, so that our maritime drones would not fall into Russian hands. For the two drones that were ahead, we chose the most optimal power-saving mode so they could continue on to the Crimean bridge. Near the Kerch Strait, the Russians set up several sumps for ships where they checked them. They only let ships into the Kerch Strait that they trusted, either with their own ships or with registration of countries with which Russia had good relations. The difficulty was that because dozens of ships were gathered in one place, each with large searchlights, it was like you were approaching a city, so it was visible in the middle of the night as if it were daytime. We had to make our way past these civilian ships. We came across one tanker that was moving slowly like a turtle. And now our drone operators, who had not slept for 20 hours before and were driving the boats, had to stop in order to let the tanker pass in front of them. And now we're standing still, swaying on the wave, where a current and the wind has risen, and their tugs are scurrying around us. And we realized that the tugs could be hiding Russian warships that could attack us with machine guns. Will we have time to maneuver? What should we do? Make a 12 degree right turn. Completed. We calmed down, concentrated, let all the enemy equipment go forward and quietly moved on. Where do I go? To the left. Move to the left. That's it. Go to the pole? Yes, you have to hit it. First of all, the railroad bridge was a priority for us. That's why we first boat went to ram the railroad bridge piers. Take your time. Slow down. Go at an angle. That's it. Move towards it. We had a connection delay of one and a half to two seconds. Align with it and keep it that way. Then the delay will be canceled out by a straight course. Don't change anything. And now to the left. And my board went between all the supports. It was the wrong bull. It's a small annoyance, but the fight goes on. In such situations, you need to instantly adjust everything possible to achieve a result. The operator was instructed to turn around and attack the road side of the Crimean bridge. Yes, yes, come on, come on. That's right, keep moving. That's the right course. In five to seven minutes, we were already at the pillar. It was a beautiful fireworks display, almost like when the Crimean Bridge was open. It all exploded in the same way. In fact, it was the first time in the history of naval battles that such an object was hit by such means. It was just wow. 
It is beyond words. The fifth boat is headed for the railroad bridge. All attention shifted to another drone that was already approaching the attack area. We didn't fully understand how the Russians reacted to this. Because after the first explosion, we saw that the affected part of the bridge was completely de-energized. It became dark. No movements of these devils is visible. We didn't see the reactions of the Russians, where their security boats were, where their helicopters were. Come on, to the left, more to the left. Go to that bull, right there. A train, a train. And here from the side of the Crimean, a train is coming across the railroad bridge. The first thought, even the first instruction to the cameraman was, catch up with the locomotive and hit the support under it so this train would also catch fire. Come on, to the left, but don't be nervous. But very quickly another thought came to mind. If this train is coming from Crimea, there is definitely no gasoline in its barrel, and there is no point of catching up with it. We need to fulfill the mission and stick to the original plan. Move closer. Now move to the left. More left. That's it. Perfect. Right there. Hunter, it's okay. He's got it. Good boy. That's it. A little more to the right. Yeah, that's good. Yes! Yes! At that point, no one could contain their emotions any longer, because the mission was definitely complete. Ukrainian security agents handed us the inspection reports of the Russian engineering team on the damage we had caused at the Crimean Bridge. The Russian wrote a closed report, which we received 12 hours after it was written. Six of the eight piers within the strike radius were destroyed, the remaining two were damaged. Now the bridge is not fully functional. Road transport moves in reverse. Each car must be no more than five tons. And the railroad connection is used only for electric trains with no more than five cars. That is, of the ammunition and everything else is now transported by ferries. Russian troops in the Zaporizhia and Kirshen regions are now receiving significantly less ammunition from Crimea. They told the whole world that this was the most protected bridge and so on. By successfully engaging and destroying it, we essentially destroyed the myth of Russians' invincibility. This is a country of fakes. Ukraine, which does not have sufficient forces or naval means, can fight enemy ships, can close them in bays and can hit their bridges. Leaders of powerful countries with navies have begun to reconsider their concepts as such. But the Russians are now flooding barges there, placing firing points near the bridge and putting up booby traps. But the Russians do not understand one thing. The security service of Ukraine never repeats itself. Never. There will be many surprises ahead, and not only in relation to the Crimean Bridge. This bridge is doomed. No Putin's bridge has any place on the legitimate territory of Ukraine's motherland. If you were interested by today's episode and would like me to continue doing episodes like this next, then let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment. You can support the author by the details in the description. Thank you.